WBC world title. Give me a good, clean fight. Obey my commands to protect yourself at all times. Yo quiero un de pelea limpia. Obedezcan mis órdenes y protejanse a todo tiempo. Todos los guantes. No glove touch. No surprise. Miguel Roman's mom, Mercedes Portillo, his wife, Rosa Maria, and an entire building behind him. Miguel Portillo is wearing blue trunks, but he's wearing a black hat here tonight. I'm telling you, Mickey Roman, he didn't even go, he didn't even move away from his corner. He stayed right there. And Burchell rushed over towards him. Guys, let's talk about the reach advantage and Roman getting inside that jab. So, everything starts with the jab. It's the most important punch in boxing. Burchell possesses a great one. And as you said, a five-inch length advantage. You see him going to work with the jab. That sets up the body shots, which he lands at a rate of about 50%. Tim... You've been the shorter, less long fighter through most That's of right. your career. What do you do if you're Mickey Roman? Well, you got to move your head. Mickey Roman don't like to move his head. You got to move his head inside, get inside that jab or get outside of that jab and step in and attack the body of Burchell. See how he's pulling straight back? That's a no-no when you're fighting against a taller opponent. You cannot step straight back. You got to angle yourself out. But also, as you say, when he... When Burchelt comes in, his chin is up. His chin is up in the air, so he's, he's there to be timed. But you got to go through hell to get it. Nearly two years since Burchelt put Francisco Vargas through hell in a dominant, scary 11th round knockout win that really put him on the map and brought him that world title. A nice overhand right there by Roman. But Shelt has a tendency to pull him back. He's not real good. Sometimes he's not real good with, with his hands, with his defense. He'll drop it him a little bit. You know, these are eight-ounce gloves, so anything can slip in there. But Shelt strong with the jab, strong with the combinations early. He's open for that counter left, Timmy. But Shelt is. <laughs> you see that right yep. hand. You see how it's mm -hmm. positioned forward and away from his chin. He's not holding the phone. He's available for the left hook. Chin up, hand out. Pretty clear below the belt. And Burchelt acknowledged it. Okay, it's fine. John surely didn't. And the best shot of the round for Mickey Roman. The overhand right. He was able to land that shot because Burchelt threw a jab from a little bit too close. And he snuck that shot right over the top. And this Under is what jab. we expected. Mickey Roman just fighting through the jab, cutting off the ring. <laughs> did you see what he did? He did. He gave him instructions. Step around, step around, directing traffic. <laughs> Round one, and what promises to be a very violent dance. Exactly what we expected in round one. With that much experience and skills. You said he was susceptible to the overhand right. There it is. It's exactly, that's exactly it. That's exactly what I'm talking about. He actually timed Burchell. As Burchell was throwing the combination, he caught him right in between with the overhand right to land that shot. 73rd fight for Roman, but he feels like a new man because he has changed the way he trains. He has changed specifically the way he eats. <laughs> He had it, you know, last time out against Salido, not last time out, but, but his first fight with Rudy Hernandez, he gave him a donut. Said, you need something to burn before you train. You just can't start. Obviously, knocked out Salido. This time, it was a slice of pecan pie. Well, I said that was so a he's the only guy trading on pecan pie and donuts who's getting better. The big story this In week, the history of boxing. When Roman did not have his weekly donut and instead went pecan pie. Now Roman the bully, forcing Burchell into the corner. Burchell's doing a real good job, and he's trying to control range right now. He's trying to abandon his jab right now. But he's landing combinations. There's Great overhand shot right. from Roman. That buckled the knees for a moment of the champion. And if you lack real defense, 
Mickey Roman is a bad guy to lock real defense against. That's exactly what I was talking about. Doesn't move his head, keeps his head down the center. Roman's going to work. And now Bruchel, two back-to-back -back shots. Now pieces out. Bay. Maybe the rarest thing now in all of sports when something lives up to its billing, and this has so far. Well, but I, I think that these guys have have more than a, a good night that they're expecting. These guys have been very explicit. They want to make history. They want to be considered with the great Mexican fighters, the great rivalries, Barrera, Morales, Marquez. My favorite is... Israel, Israel Vasquez and Marquez. Bernardo, you've seen all those fights. You've been watching these guys for a quarter century. Tell me about the Morales fight. I mean, this is Barrera Morales. Those guys did not like each other, and the action lived up to the hatred in what ended up being a brutal fight. Fight of the year in 2000, round of the year as well. Vasquez Marquez, neither guy was ever the same after those four battles, and that's what these guys want to do to one another. This could be a round of the year. Rochelle took a big shot early in the round and now has come back strong. These are the type of fights that Roman likes. He can endure a whole lot of pain and he also can dish it, but right now he's in trouble. Getting backed up by the champion, Rochelle, as he pulled back with a straight right hand. Well, you can talk about using that jab all you want, but then you're in the firefight and the jab goes out the window. <laughs> Mickey Roman trying to write an extraordinary story, fighting at home tonight. Through two. There's overhand right there. Beautiful mid-distance range. You know, in, a, in the mid-distance range, you have to understand, you have a responsibility of defense. And you also have a responsibility to offense. Now here you go, Pacheco coming back with the flurry of combinations right here. The land over show. What I was talking about with the mid distance range, you have to understand you have responsibility to offense and you have responsibility to defense. If you get too careless or too carried away with throwing shots, you leave yourself wide open. That's exactly what happened to Burchell right there in that round. What I'm seeing with Burchell is, you know, he just leans in. He's leaning over that front foot. And, and, and that's what's making him susceptible to a lot of these shots. Tim, is he's giving away his natural advantage of the height and the reach. Which is the height, and he's reaching in. He's making himself available for the uppercut. Bernie, what was the reaction in Burchell's corner? Well, they were concerned initially about what happened, but they were very happy about how Burchell closed out that second round. For this round, they wanted to continue to use his uppercut, and Alfredo Caballero said he's got to work the body. Great advice by Burchell's corner, recognizing Mickey Roman leaning forward, trying to get close. You lift the guy up with the uppercut, it's a smart thing to do, and to work the body to slow down Mickey Roman and to take his power away at the same time. Did you see, did you see where he's throwing some of those, some of those body shots? From the, right on the hip. From the, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right on the hip. And, and this is what we're seeing right now. Is, to my mind, Mickey Roman's, after 70-something fights, greatest talent of all, his ability to remain undiscouraged right. and believe in himself. And, and you guys mentioned the diet before, and I think it misses the, the bigger point. It's not about eating pecan pie or eating donuts. Rudy Hernandez told him, hey, listen, you have to believe me. You, he didn't want to believe me. So I can't eat that. I haven't been eating that all my career. But believe me, you have and once you believe in your trainer, you have a better fighter. It, it, the system almost doesn't matter, but if you have real belief, you'll fight better. Roman pushed backwards, sometimes the hardest thing to do. And a big left, now Burchell, sets in trouble, pouring it on. Roman is staggered here. His heart telling him to go forward, but his brain should be telling him to go backwards. He's badly hurt right now. With a lot of time left in this round. Good tie-up from Roman, but he's badly hurt right now. He doesn't know where he is. Roman is in big trouble here, and Burchell knows it. 
And the veteran hang on for the final 30 seconds. We, That's a veteran we were, move right there. <laughs> we were told that we would see a different Mickey Ramon tonight. But at the end of the day, you are what you are. And it's gallant, and it's brutal, and it's an awesome thing to watch. But it's tough. You can change your diet. You can't change your heart. Huge crowd here at the Don Haskins Center. Sensing Mickey Roman is in trouble. They need, he needs their help, but he is in there alone. And Burchell, the champion, pouring it on here at the end of round three. Here's Burchell right here. Lands a beautiful left hook. Against Roman. Roman still firing in the mid-range there and gets clipped with the left hook by Burchell. Is the end of the round, a follow-up, nice jab in the right hand. That's what you call no man's land. When you put yourself in a position where the, your, your opponent can hit you, and you can't hit your opponent, that's no man's land. Mickey Roman was in no man's land getting hit with those combinations. And once you get cracked in no man's corner, land, it's hard to get out. <laughs> Granted corner for Rudy Hernandez, who trained his younger brother, Gennaro Hernandez. He is standing by with Bernardo. All right, Rudy, it seemed that your fighter, Mickey Roman, was hurt in round number three. What were your instructions for him? I want him to fight low. I need him to stay low and keep his guard up and not come in just straight forward. We need to get him going, coming in side to side. He's able to hurt uh, Burchell when he lands that overhand right. What's your instruction for him to be able to land that more continually? I'm more worried about him getting hit. If he can, if he can, if he can get in, he can hurt him. Thank you very much. Rudy Hernandez in the blue corner of Mickey Roman. It's not just the words. You can see the concern in Rudy Hernandez's eyes when you look at him now. Well, it's Burchell controlling the distance on the outside and catching Roman as he comes right in mid-range. Catching him before he gets to the spot where he wants to be with combinations to the head and body. Guys, we could sit here for weeks leading up to this fight talking about defense. Forget it. Once it started, the defense was gone. I think that there's something else here, which is that I hope that Miguel Burchell gets what he wants. But right now, as, as big as he is and as formidable as he is and as powerful as he is, his defense is not yet ready for Lomachenko. There are too many flaws. He leans too far forward. There's an awkwardness. And Lomachenko will take advantage of that. The impetuousness of youth. I don't need my defense. Eventually he will. And you're going to be in there with a guy like Mickey Roman who took a took some brutal shots in round three and is now dictating the pace here in round four. Mickey Roman is looking for one shot right now. He's keep with fine pressure. He's looking for one shot. He's trying to force Torchell in the position where he wants him to be able to land that one shot, which is the left hook right now or the overhand right. Tim, don't you think that's a mistake? We're in the, we're in the fourth round. If you're playing for one shot at this point, isn't that a mistake? Well, he's applying that pressure, that mental pressure on Burchell. I'm trying to wear down Burchell. If he can stay here and, and make it to the later rounds, I think he can give Burchell problems later on because he's definitely going to test his conditioning and his mental fortitude tonight. What I think he really wants to test, he wants to make this a contest of who has, he told us to us, who has the stronger chin. He saw Burchell with, he's got the gloves up a little bit now. But still leaning forward to land those shots. Do you see that lunging quality that I'm talking about? Oh, well, I've seen Mickey Roman like this before. We saw him in the Salido fight like this, and we saw him come back and knock out Salido in the later rounds. So as long as he's in there, he still has a chance. The story of the fight tonight and the story of the entire career of Mickey Roman. He's taken some beatings, but he's still here. For Burchell. The question is, what is he hearing in his corner? Ready? To Bernardo. Arnulfo Caballero is a trainer of Miguel Berchel. What's working and what does he need to fix here? ¿Qué está funcionando para Berchel y qué tiene que arreglar? Pues está, está funcionando los, rec, los golpes rectos, pero ahorita le estamos pidiendo que tire un poquito de upper y de gancho, cuidándose del volado de derecha de, de, de Mackie Román. He says what's working is those straight shots for Betchelt, but he's got to start throwing left hooks and work the counter and the uppercut. But he's got to really watch out for that looping right hand from Nicky Roman. Sounds like he was listening in. That left hook, 
which he wants to see more of, is what got him the title against Vargas. He landed it over and over and over at night. When you think about the things that Mickey Romont has been through in his life, in his career, in the ring, out of the ring, you realize why he just keeps coming forward. He spoke before about his brother being shot and killed, 17. Mickey was 20. He was already a pro. He had a wife. He had a kid. He had a mother to think of. And that was, for, for a guy who fights so recklessly and so violently, that was a moment of great emotional maturity and, and discipline not to go at the guy who killed his brother. And at it, some intuitive level, he understood that, that victory in a place like this, in a night like this, would be his best revenge. Every single time Burchelt stands still for just a moment, he gets clipped over the top, timed like that, by shots from Roman, big power shots. Leaping right hands and left hooks as he's pulling back, trying to get space. And what you're hearing is the crowd, Mickey, Mickey, Mickey. It's never going to be set up for Mickey Roman as well as it is tonight. <laughs> Mickey has one gear, stalk. He's putting that pressure on you mentally. Mentally and physically, he's going to make you work for it. And that's the price he has to pay for it, those shots he's taking, particularly in round three. Well, he's at a huge disadvantage. You know, he's in there with a guy that can box and a guy that can fight and throws combinations, longer arms, taller, more rangier, good punching power. Well, he's gotten through that range right now, and he's just pushing him back. The crowd trying to rally their hero, Mickey Roman, in his title fight through five. Sidon is right on. There's an enormous price to be paid for this type of combat. And both of these guys so locked in on that history, on that heritage, and they want their place. They want, they want you to be watching this on YouTube 20 years right. from now. And if you are, don't tell us what's about to happen because we don't know yet. <laughs> So a lot of time left. They, they hate each other now, but both of them have an eye toward posterity. And they need each other to get there. They'll be watching this together one day. I don't know about that. I'd like to see it. I'd like to see over a beer. <laughs> In the corner of Mika Ramon, Rudy Hernandez keeps imploring him, box, please, use the jab. I know you're a warrior. You can be a warrior tomorrow. Tonight, box more. It has to be an environment so frustrating for trainers because everything you've worked on in the gym, so much of it can go out the window in an environment like this. See, Burchelt, as good as he is, gets a little wild, gets a little over-anxious. Leaning in, leaning in. Oh, well, he has right now. He has Roman in no man's land at about 30 seconds ago, and he was following up with combination, doing exactly what he was doing, what he's supposed to do. Catch a fighter when he's coming in, and catch him when he's going out with dropping his hands, not being disciplined with his defense. This is not the size advantage or the reach advantage. This is what Bruchelt has been like, lunging. There he is again, trying to take advantage of that angle. That presented in front of him. I think Roman is hurt again. He is, and he just took two good shots to the body. Roman got clipped earlier in this round, and it has slowed him down. Burchelt is younger. That's another good bigger. Shot. He knows exactly where he's going to. He's trying to land that liver punch right now, landing combinations. Best shot for Burchelt, that left. They're going to call that a slip. But it was aided in large part with that left hook from Burchelt that his corner has been imploring him to use. It's just a matter of time. It's going to be to the body. Look how open uh, Roman's mouth is. That body shot took so much out of him. And he down goes. he goes. But Mickey Roman says, no, not yet. Not tonight. I'm not done. If 
Mickey Roman is going down tonight. He's going down on his shield. There it is, combinations. Burchell moving in, killing him to the body, dropping the hands of Roman. You see Roman leans forward and tries to grab and hold, and he gets clipped with the right hook as that left hand was down. Burchell, you see, jumped the rope. He thought it was over. I'm not sure it's ever over with this guy, Mickey Roman. I'm not sure it is either. I mean... The 21 shot, again, that left hook, digging to the body by Burchell. It's the body work that's, a, that's affecting Roman right now. Burchell wanted an epic performance, a championship performance. He wants to be on that list. Burchell right there trying to catch Roman, pull him back and trying to get out, trying to create some distance between himself and Burchell. Now we're seeing in uncharacteristic fashion Mickey Roman going backward. Roman is still actually Roman is still hurt from the previous round from that right hook. His legs are wide. He's in retreat. This is all heart right now for the challenger. Taking big body shots. It's just a matter of time. If I was in Roman's corner, I would stop would stop this fight right now. But Roman's a warrior. And he's coming back with shots like that. After a speech by Rudy Hernandez, as you just heard, this is a fight. You expect him to really stop it? No, not at all. He just knows, Hernandez just knows that this is his last hurrah, so that's why he's not going to step in. But I just see Ramon very hurt right now. Great doubling up on the left hook. If you hear in the audience people yelling, you can do it, you can do it, Mickey. The crowd is more subdued than they were because the reality of the moment is starting to settle in here with the crowd. They're a bit more optimistic than, than we are, too. The crowd can definitely pump you up, give you a little bit of energy. Needed to survive these rounds or come back in these rounds. Rochelle has banked rounds, he's banked knockdowns, but he is still coming forward. Roman's in there trying to survive right now. That's you exactly know, what he's doing. He's trying to survive and stay in this fight. Trying after, to recover. After he beat Salido, Roman got a tattoo of a, a crown, champion's crown, on his right wrist. And Burchell suggested after this fight he'll have to remove it. My suggestion would be to take the crown and put it on his heart. There is little question. His other tattoo was a lion tattoo that showed he's fearless. That one he should never, ever lose. Look at the Someone shot is. that Roman has taken. Oh. Money is a proposition in 2019. And, and it could be at 130 or 135. Hegis tells me that if, if Lomachenko thinks it's a good enough fight and an interesting enough fight, he'll go, down, he'll go back down to 130. And get a belt or two. If Burchell wins, there could be a unification fight first for Burchell because there's other champions out there. Bernardo was, Bernardo, you were in Mickey Roman's corner. Yes, Rudy Hernandez was very clear. He told Mickey Roman, this is your last round. Remember what you said K kill or be killed. This is the cruel sport of boxing between two proud Mexican warriors. And Mickey Roman going for it now because the clock is ticking. He has taken a pounding over the last three or four rounds. Rudy Hernandez is doing a really good job in moving in his fighter and getting back in this fight right now. He's having a good moment right now in this fight. Landing combinations right now against Burchell. And if there's ever a world-class fighter that's going to give him that 100-to-1 shot, <laughs> it's Burchell and the way he's fighting. Well, if you don't know about Miguel Burchell, now you know. It's a scary young man. He definitely is scary, especially with his combinations, and he's very powerful and long. Roman in big trouble. Burchell pouring it on. He, too, wants this to be the final round of the fight on his terms.
unanswered shots from Brazil. And Mickey Roman says, more, more, I'm still standing here. Yeah, he's taking a real beating right now from Brazil. Mickey Roman is making Rudy Hernandez's job excruciatingly difficult. <laughs> do, you step, do you step in and save your guy, or do you let him keep his pride intact? And at what cost? Mark, all I'm going to tell you is this is his 73rd fight. There's a lot of wear and tear mm -hmm. on Rudy Roman. On Mickey Roman, excuse me. The crowd again. They sense it's last gasp time for Mickey Roman. This is just target practice right now for Bichette. An extraordinary display of heart and stamina and everything Mickey Roman yes. said he was and hoped to be. But the reality is he's been in there with a better, younger, stronger fighter, and this is turning into a one-sided fight. It's not Mickey Roman's responsibility. That's right. But ultimately, it's his corner. Yeah, he's definitely right. Or the referee. There were furious competitive rounds early in this fight. But it has turned dramatically against Mickey Roman. And amazing that he's still coming forward. Roman has the biggest heart I've ever seen. Bigger than you? Still pressing forward. Look at him. Still trying to win. Wow. He's not getting any style points, but if you saw in the last round when he pointed to his chain, he said, come on, he gets some raging bull points. Oh, absolutely not. He's not on style. He just needs to land punches. And he has a champion right now on the ropes trying to tie up. How could you miss my raging bull record? You think that doesn't hurt me? <laughs> Mark, you wanted, you wanted cinema. Instead, we've got a live 30 for 30 playing out in front of us. Big shot. Roman still coming back. He's taking three to get one off. I don't know what's holding him up right now. Roman, look at him. Still coming back with firepower. And I'm sure Bertrell is like, <laughs> what's holding, keeping this guy up? I'm hitting him with everything. What we don't know is what's left in those punches of Mickey Roman, but he is still the aggressor. He is still coming forward. This is amazing. To the body, now to the head, brutal combinations. Mickey Roman on wobbly legs. Burchell trying to finish him off here in round nine, and down he goes. For the third time. He's not staying down. He won't stay down. I hate to say this, but the referee, John Shorey, really needs to keep a close eye right now. I think he is. And like almost everyone else, just caught up in the moment. And the fact that every once in a while, Roman throws a shot like that. That's exactly, that's exactly the rules. As long as you're throwing, they're not going to stop it. And Mickey Roman still waving him on, still waving him on. You know, your, your, your pride can recover, your brain tissue cannot. That's right. I agree with you. 73 fights, Mark. It's a lot of wear and tear on Mickey Roman. And he has no chance right now of winning this fight. He's taking punishment. Burchell, good stop. About time. A world championship performance from Miguel Burchell. <laughs> A performance that will make that family proud forever for Mickey Roman. It's all started from the body work right here. Roman right there, out there in no man's land, pulling straight back. And Burchell, combination to the head and body, and just following him as he's moving back, trying to create distance 
from Burchell, and there's the finish. All he's doing is letting his hands go. He knew he had a hurt, hurt prey, and just and he, and he took it to Roman, and the ref steps in and stops the match. Very competitive. It's a seesaw battle. Both guys landed some effective shots right there. As you see, Roman lands a big left hook and overhand right. Just another look at that left hook right there. With Roman early on. Then round three. Ray Burchell coming back with a series of combinations himself. Hurting Roman with that left hook right there. Beautiful shot right there from Burchell. In the follow-up combination. He did in round six. Things heats up even more. Burchell overpowering Roman. Catching with a right hook right there and down he goes. Celebrating a little bit too early. The fight wasn't over. Burchell thought the fight was over. And Roman gets up. Round nine. More Burchell. Coming in with a series of combinations. Pepper in the middle on the, on the, and against the ropes. Beautiful finish. And the ref steps in and saw enough. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the time. Two minutes, 58 seconds in round number nine. Our referee in charge, John Shorley, stops the contest. He is the winner by way of technical knockout. He is still the WBC Super Featherweight Champion of the World, El Orgulloso Guerrero de Cancun, Miguel El Alacran. lost in the heart of Miguel Roman tonight was this championship world-class performance by Miguel Burchell.